at home. Three times over 13 years, my mother is diagnosed with cancer. At the last, she grows tired of doctors, Delamo Hospital in Torrance, California, chemical and radiation therapies, insurers and others who promise too much. Instead, spends a year at home in her own bed. Chooses the low-cost alternative to die amid the love and ministrations of her family and friends, like her own mother, 25 years before. Ovarian cancer, the gynecologist pronounces in 1966, surgery then appears to clear her system completely until the early 1970s, when she becomes sick again, is treated once more, and then given another clean bill of health. But when diagnosed with cancer, yet again in 1978, the malignancy has spread too widely to excise, the doctors advise. My mother is too far gone. On her deathbed, she remains restless, declaring, I have too much to do to lie here. In that final year, makes each of her children a photo album to remind us of our childhoods, show us how she remembers us, shrinks from being the well-rounded woman that we had known to a living skeleton. Fortunately, has many nurse friends from her Baptist church who daily help her wash, dress, and change bedclothes. Mother declares that she does not want her passing to spoil our holidays, so she will leave us in early November. On her last day, weeks before our Thanksgiving feast in 1979, she has long since become unable to swallow, yet refuses an IV drip, chooses to starve to death. At the end, she misses her final chance to get up on my soapbox, as she so often liked to say, offers no last words. Perhaps simply cannot choke them out, or decides enough already has been said, catches her last breath and gasps for more all around the bed. We all hold hands with her and one another, my father, my sisters, so many of her friends.